So how are you? Feel better? I'm doing better. Um, thank you very much, Kyle, for filling in last week. You did an awesome job. Um, I've got like the cold from Seventh Circle of Hell. Like I still, pr- I hopefully will not have a coughing fit in the middle of the bit tonight. If I do, I apologize. Sorry. Um, I'm still a little, you know, Kathleen Turner meets Peter Brady, but you know, it's he a, does what he can. It's an odd confluence there. But it's true though, because I have this raspy voice that every now and then gets really squeaky. So, what you know, what kind of baby a- would they make? That's just wow. <laughs> I don't know. And it made you cough just to think about it's it. Really, really big hippo today. Good lord, it's bigger than you are. Do, 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 do. I'm fairly certain that thing has more surface area than you do. You got a problem, Mister? Mama said, "Knock you out." I'm gonna knock you out. Hippo said, knock you out. Don't call it a comeback. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Little loopy tonight. What are you on? Nothing, actually. This is my first day attempting, like, no cold meds at all. So, we'll see how, <laughs> how I'm doing. Like, you know, aside from a few coughing fits, I've been okay today. But, actually, I can't even blame cold meds because... I'm not on anything right now, you might, except the you cough drop that I'm, you know, sucking on to try and keep myself from coughing through the bit. Con- consider the <laughs> considering the uh, the stories we have tonight. You you might want have want to have been on something, but we'll get there. So, uh, are, are are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's hit this. Each week. Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of shit, brings it on back to us in a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And to start us off tonight, um, there are things you should not say in an airport, in a plane, and there's one word that comes to mind. What is that word, Tara? Bomb. Bingo. <laughs> and you know what? You know who especially should not say that word? Harold and Kumar when they're really saying bong. Close. The, I saw that. The pilot. Oh, yeah. Um. Now, to be fair, let me give you the story here. Um, to be fair, he uh he was wishing someone's mom. A happy birthday. However, the, the passengers uh, did not understand him because, okay, here's the thing. If you've ever flown and listened to the, uh, to the announcements, they, 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 they try to tell you stuff, but here's what you hear. Thank you for flying. That's what you hear. pretty easy to understand. Well, maybe I just get on the planes that's got the fucked up intercom. Oh, no. Here's your problem. Huh. The journey from Baltimore to Long Island's MacArthur Airport. These are Long Islanders. There's your problem. Long Island? Little fucking Long Islanders. Long Island? We don't understand people who don't talk like us. Uh, apparently, the pilot... It's like another fucking language. Yeah, the pilot was innocently trying to wish happy birthday to the mother of an air traffic controller when he used the term mom on board. Many of the many on board went into a panic when they mistakenly thought the pilot had said bomb <laughs> on board. Because he would say that really cheerfully. Hey, everybody, I just... Just like want to, everybody to know, we've yeah. got a bomb on board today. Woohoo! And your flight time is going to be about one hour. We've got a bomb on board, so... Uh, yeah, like, they're not just going to uh, throw that night. in there. Morons. <sighs> this is why I left Long Island. Okay, I understand people are a little little leery <laughs> about shit these days. With, with good reason. But fuck's sake, you really think the pilot's just going to be like, hey, everybody, we got a bomb on board, people so... People have gone insane is the problem. Like, people have gone fucking insane. Gone? Like, you can't... On, like, because of the whole... The TSA thing, the... Like, since 9-11, 
the they have done such a fantastic job of creating a panic and making us afraid of everything that now we're afraid of everything and we have fucking panic attacks at the drop of a hat. So happy birthday someone's mom turns into oh my god someone's trying to blow up the plane we're gonna die. Yay. Like it's a sick sad world. Well let's uh speaking of oh my god without really thinking it through that that brings us to our next story here. I, I don't even know how this worked. I I'm I guess I'll I'll we'll, we'll see how it worked. Teen robbed bank by banks plural two by drive through. That's fucking efficient. That's what that is. From Orem, this is from Orem, Utah. This almost sounds too bizarre to be true. A teen is under arrest, accused of robbing two banks in less than an hour. Authorities say a 16-year-old boy allegedly took his mother's car without permission, drove to a uh -oh. nearby central bank branch, and pulled into the drive-up lane. He sent a note through the drive through canister tell telling the teller to send him money. He inferred on the note that he had a weapon. After complying with the young man's demands, the teller contacted police and were able to give a detailed description of the vehicle, including the license plate number, but before investigators were able to track the boy down... He allegedly used the same modus operandi on the America's First Credit Union Bank just 20 minutes later. Here's the thing about that. Um, the threat when you bring a weapon into a bank is <laughs> yes. you're going to create a hostage situation and shoot people in the bank, etc. If the dude's outside the bank in a car... It doesn't really matter if he has a weapon, because what what's he going to do to you? He's communicating through a pneumatic tube. <laughs> I know. And there goes the B-52s again. But he can't hurt you. No. Lock Don't give him money. Lock the door. Make him walk his lazy ass in the bank for it, like every other bank robber. What you do is you lock the door, you call the cops, you stay in there. This the is the problem with the come. kids today. This is the problem with the kids today. We encourage them to be lazy. We don't even make them learn how to rob a fucking bank properly anymore. <laughs> in my day, I had to get off my ass to rob exactly. a bank. Exactly. You had to walk into that bank and uh, to rob it. Now, just, oh, hey, give me money. It's all about instant gratification with the kids today. This is the problem. Yeah, We're I, coddling them too much. I understand clerks and tellers. They are all conditioned. They are all trained. Just comply with the robbers. Do whatever they say. Which is good. Your life is worth more well, than yeah, your money. It's That's not good. Your money, you know. But in this situation, just a tiny jump of critical thinking. Little tiny one. Little little tiny bead of saying, wait a second. I mean it's true. People are pointing it out. I work retail and we are told if anyone like don't don't be a fucking hero. It's 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 not your money. Like we don't want anybody getting killed. Just give them the tail, whatever the fuck they want. Do you think I get that? Here's the, here's the other question. Do you think that actually, if they if haven't even entered the bank, I really feel like you could just like you said, lock the door and call the cops, and you're not really being a hero at that point. I have to I, wonder: <laughs> did they actually read the note, or are they just so you know conditioned to stuff money in jar, throw it in tube, that they just like okay, stuff money in jar, throw it? No, in. because have you ever gone to the bank with the wrong slip filled out? point yeah they they love to be anal retentive about that shit so yeah. yeah now i do like the fact that the article points out that he took his mother's car without permission <laughs> so bad, bad. egregious crime that kid committed that day naughty naughty he took mom's car without permission and then he robbed two banks <laughs> he did not have permission to take the car out and he didn't even bring it back with a full tank he is so grounded yeah, it, it it says a lot about our society today. You know, you can you can get drive through daiquiris, you can get drive through banking, you can get oh drive through. Bank. Every, you know, after a week in New Orleans, I really believe that it should be a law that every city in the country should be required to have daiquiri shops on every corner. It would be a happier country. We would be a better people if we could just be fucking buzzed on daiquiris all the time. So yeah, well, I guess I guess drive through bank robbery, it's the, next you know what they're going to do. They're going to they're going to come up with a way to rob people, uh, to rob a bank through the internet without, you know, just you can email a note and they'll PayPal you the money. They they have. That's called like No, 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 no. I'm not talking virus. I'm talking, you know, please send me the money. 
Okay, what's, what's your PayPal address? <coughs> I have a gun pointed in your... Where are you, north of here? That way. I think you should try that. I should. I think you should try that and tell us how it goes. Yeah. After you're done vandalizing really cemeteries for your internet <laughs> show. I almost did that. That was so dumb of me. All right, let's see what else. Speak, and we got, okay. I can't do this show alone, sir. I do not have the technology. This is this is a trilogy here of uh, of stupid criminals, and then we, oh. have, we have a worse trilogy to come, but uh, <laughs> speaking of uh, uh, just dumb, man drops gun during robbery, tries to buy it back. And it's Florida. An armed man barged into a Florida motel room on Thursday, scuffled with his victims, dropped his gun, only to return later to try to buy back his own firearm for $40. That's the opposite of a robbery. <laughs> I know, when you've, at this point, you've completely fucked up, because you're actually like, losing money on yeah, the proposition. that's... That's the opposite of what you were trying to accomplish. <laughs> Your business model has gone into the red. Yeah, I know. It's 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 you're you're Yeah, that's negative cash flow. Um about midnight on Thursday, Cedric Mitchell, 39, tried to rob two men at the Royal Hotel. A Royal Motel, sorry. I, I don't want to give you the wrong impression. It's a motel, not a hotel. Police said the Her police told Harold that uh, Mitchell broke in asked the man for pills. When they said they didn't have any, he pulled out a handgun. Mitchell then demanded, everything you got. At some point during the scuffle, Mitchell allegedly dropped his gun and was pepper sprayed. He then ran away. But moments later, police captain told the paper Mitchell was back, begging the two men to let him buy his gun back for $40. They then pepper sprayed him in the face again, and he once again ran away. <laughs> Uh, did they, the men called 911 it says then did they not call 911 until he came back the second time I know right the first thing they do like uh, hello cops this guy came try to rob us we have his gun can you like, come and do some shit did the attempted robbery not phase them and they waited until he tried to make a business transaction cause hmm. did, did they just like <laughs> or, or were they just like inside the motel looking out the window going look at this guy Look at this fucking guy. Hey, dude, he's coming back. He's coming, he's coming back. back. I can't believe this shit. Tell him to get us some ice. Get the cell phone. We'll put this on YouTube. I, you know. <laughs> that's the opposite of robbery. Uh, You're bad at robbery. Do, I love... They pepper Just sprayed it. Just behind. Like, you have lost your weapon and not gained anything. No. Call it a fucking loss and move on. Don't... Don't sacrifice your dignity on top of it. Like, keep something. Keep just keep walk away. You know, or was he gonna just keep going until he pissed himself at this point? I mean, really? Yeah. Could they? They would. I bet you these assholes could have pepper sprayed him all night long <laughs> till they emptied the can. They just. Well, I was gonna say they. Ima I imagine they'd run out of pepper spray at some point. I don't know. I, Considering this guy, they could I, go out, buy I, some, I, come I, back, I, and he'd come back I, again. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. all right. But why pepper spray him when they now have a gun? We 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 come. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, at, at this point, you know, they have the gun. They yeah. have your firearm, and you're fucking with them. I mean, really, he's kind of lucky. He only got pepper sprayed a second time. Yeah, cut your losses. That's what I'm saying. Quit while you're behind. Go home. All right. Our next, the next one. This is the douchiest criminal of the night. Hands down. Of the night. Only of the night. Of the night, yeah. Um, you're gonna hate this guy. I hate this guy. Everyone hate this guy is just uh, Can be man pays hitman quote in quotes to attack judge bungles his own trial. William Berhansel's boiling hatred of an Oregon City municipal judge peaked late last summer when he paid an ex-con on a Harley Davidson $1,000 to, to shatter Judge Daniel Warham's elbows and smash his ribs. 
As the biker, actually an undercover police officer, rode off, cops swarmed Abra Hansel's car and arrested him. That's dumb enough already. But this guy descends into layers of stupid, yet ascends into layers of douchebaggery. Wait, wait, do you read this? His raising sense of injustice bubbled up again in this month when he came, when the <coughs> case came against trial in uh, Clackamas County. Rather than trust the outcome to a court-appointed defense attorney, Berhansel, a self-styled legal expert, represented himself. The trial uh -oh. was a must-see for lawyers. Um, the jury would hear a story about crimes motivated by obsession, anger, and revenge. Uh, Berhansel frequently interrupted or argued Circuit Judge Jeffrey S. Jones and intentionally wore his inmate uniform as a protest. Quote, I want the jury to know I'm in jail where I can't meet with anybody. They do. Yeah, that's pretty much usually how it works. Um, Berhansel said his constitutional right to due, price, due process had been violated. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you go to prison and we trade places whether you like that or not, sir, he scolded Judge Jones. Okay. Trying to say you're going to send the judge to prison. Not helping. Um, the third day, he demanded the case be halted. His heart was not pumping enough oxygen to his heart and brain, he said. Quote, that affects my ability to concentrate. Well, that would affect your ability to concentrate. His heart is not pumping enough blood, enough oxygen, to his heart. What? Maybe. I, doesn't, doesn't the doctor have two hearts? I... What? Um, it is highly... Doesn't un he? <laughs> um, the, yes, he does, he does. Well, there you go. Obviously, this guy is the... He's a time lord, yeah. Yeah. doctor or some shit. The judge ruled against him, but Hansel refused to participate and demanded to be returned to jail. <laughs> and then they ruled against him. Now, this guy's got a long history. Apparently, he, he sues and intimidates and harasses all kinds of of uh public officials yeah what was he on trial for well for trying to pay a hitman to break okay. the judge ribs and arm he, he actually told the hitman i don't want you to kill him because then i can't sue him for getting beat up by oh no no he he man? had he had more more problems with this judge but he wanted to sue this whole, him this article is so confusing he go to it's at the bottom he he, he had more problems with this judge but he also wanted to sue him, and he wanted to beat him up, too. Okay. And you know what? He might have been, you know, that this guy could have been like a crime lord or some shit, had he not been the most incompetent motherfucker ever. <laughs> well, everybody could be a crime lord if they weren't an incompetent motherfucker. This guy, this guy had, like, <laughs> the will of Scarface and the ability of Bozo the Clown. This is not a good combination at all. They, they don't work together. Well, it is for us. Well, it is for us, yes. Yeah, this asshole on here. Um, that just, yeah. All right, so, so this ends the crime. Now it's time for all of the naked. And we have it. it, it I'm going to tell you, it's the, it, the naked ascends in levels this week. We, we it, it's. How can it ascend in levels? There's only one level of naked. Oh! It's naked. There, there's extenuating That's circumstances. Yes. There's extenuating circumstances. Let's start with this one. Like, did someone rip off their own skin? Deputies, <laughs> teen finds naked man in kitchen stealing rum. Florida. Fort Myers, a 14-year-old girl discovered a naked man in her kitchen stealing a bottle of Captain Morgan's from the pantry girl told Lee County Sheriff's deputy she was alone in her home when she heard someone in the kitchen. According to the arrest report, she left her bedroom, went to the kitchen, and found 47-year-old Keenan Klusner of Eustis naked and bent over in the pantry. 
Ew. Taking a bottle of Captain Morgan Spice rum. All right, everybody stop with the fucking Jack Sparrow joke. <laughs> it's been made. We were all thinking it. No one had to be that guy, but everybody was that. It's it's done. Let's move yeah, on. Let's move on. I'm not going to say it. Um, ben, Oh, that's okay. 14 years old. You hear a noise. You go downstairs and... And you are accompanied by... A fruit, ba- a fruit basket. That, yeah. That's, that's, that's not what you... Ass like. and scrotum stealing your rum. Yeah. She went back to her room, locked her door, called the... Uh, no, she, she uh, used her phone and then left the house. <laughs> Smart girl. Um, the, uh, the reports say the father found Klusner naked in his front yard when he came home. A neighbor was inside his home when dogs began barking. According to the reports, the neighbor saw Klusner in the front yard and retrieved his gun... Once outside, he saw Klusner naked in the neighbor's front yard and detained him at gunpoint until deputies arrived. Why? If you are drunk enough to think it's a great idea... Oh, great, this, the screen goofed up. No goof up screen. If you're drunk enough to think it's a grand idea to break into someone's house for, for, for more alcohol... Wait, what time of day was this? Because the guy was out doing yard work, so this wasn't in the middle of the night. No, this was middle of the day. Wow. He he was drunk enough to break into someone's house for more booze. Um, you've had too much. Because at that point, the liquor stores are open. Yeah, they're, 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 you don't have to. You can go and steal from them. With your clothes on. You can go buy some rum with clothes on, Yes. That would be better. Why was this the more viable option? Why? I, I think it's most confusing to me that this happened during the daytime. Yeah, because he was just duped. Because there are so many other options during the daytime for how to acquire rum. Like, do do do, going down the street, ain't got no pants, going to get some booze. Do do do, what the fuck? Was he a particularly stealthy naked person? Because I think, you know, I would have gone... I know, uh, broad daylight, naked guy walking around, you'd think somebody would notice that, right? Well, wait, no, it's Florida. <laughs> but still, like... It's Florida. It's it's, it's Florida. They they don't give a shit. Oh, honey, look, there's a naked guy. Another one? Yeah, well, it's only Tuesday. Uh, I, I just... And well, no. Here's a better question. Dad, w- dad outside doing yard work. Presumably, naked guy had to pass through the yard to get into the house. Yeah, you might want to get your peripheral vision checked on that. You the know, fuck was dad doing that he didn't notice a naked guy breaking into his house? If you think you see a dick, if if you think you see a dick, then uh, you probably saw a dick. Double check. Double check to be sure. Just say yeah, it. Like, if your 14-year-old daughter's in the house and a naked guy is breaking into your house and you don't notice and you're outside? Eye test. Get an eye you test. Probably, yeah, you should probably Lens crafters. work on your multitasking perception. Well, let's let's move up up the, the, the naked scale. Um, this this story originally had a picture <coughs> that I cannot show you. Ooh. And I did not have time to to uh, to edit it, so we're gonna have to go with a different version of it. But I can show you the aftermath. Let's ha- have a look here. Um, see, oh, I posted this to Twitter. You did, you did. You see, you see this. Uh, what what's going on here on the car? John Knight woke up Wednesday morning, thinking he would finally take his car to get it fixed. He went to sleep that night with his car in worse condition than before and an image in his head that he'll never forget. The 25-year-old man said he was driving his dark blue Volvo station wagon down Church Street through San Francisco's Noe Valley. Noe? Is it Noe Valley? Noe Valley? I I don't know. know. Noe Valley. Neighborhood about uh, 10.30 a.m. when he came across a strange scene. At the intersection of 24th Street, a heavyset woman stood wrapped in a blanket surrounded by medical personnel. Uh, J Church train was stopped and pastors crowding and trying to see what was happening. Suddenly, the, I love that this is so dramatically written. Suddenly, the woman whipped the blanket off, 
threw it at medics, revealing the only item of clothing she had on was a pair of closed-toed shoes. And then she turned around and noticed Knight, still stopped and now shocked behind the wheel. She walks directly at me, he said. She walks up the hood of my car, and then she began stomping the windshield completely naked. Here, since we can't show a picture, I will do a dramatic reenactment. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Uh, uh, I'm stepping on your car. She cracked the windshield with the first stomp. She got in a couple more hits before plainclothes officers pulled her off and handcuffed her as she screamed and wailed. Ah! Why? What (laughs) happened here? Well, clearly... Clearly, she had... I mean, clearly this woman is a few fries short of a Happy Meal. Like... I mean, she was already being treated by medical personnel or something. She was wrapped in a blanket. She was already naked. Like, clearly... I'm sorry, I'm getting another cough drop. Um, you know, something's going on there. And I don't know why she got so angry at his car, but... What hurts me about this story is, and ladies and gentlemen, play along at home. What really hurts me about this is, picture yourself behind that steering wheel. Picture yourself staring helplessly as this very large woman with only a pair of, I love how the story points points out, closed-toed shoes. There were sneakers. Sneakers, huh? With as, yeah, as the picture you can see there because somebody actually got a picture of this like we can't put it on the stream and midi is res like we in, can't you know, put it on the stream um i yeah, want somebody, to some, somebody put the link in the chat so people can look if they want yeah they, 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 but um i want to but we can't yeah. put it on the stream just picture she is exceedingly nude picture this woman coming toward you and then just hovering above you and her legs, they do get spread at some point in order to be doing the stomping. So you're looking, you are it's sort of like gazing into the maw of hell at that point. There's nothing pleasant about this. You don't know that. She could have porn star vag. I, I stand corrected. She could indeed have porn star vag. What was I thinking? Just because she's got more cushion for the pushing doesn't mean that her lady business is ugly. Don't be assuming. I pretty much take it, unless I have made it made a, a concerted effort to see one's lady business, I don't want to. I have no interest in it. Don't well, me. yes. It, I mean, this is sort of the natural companion to no one wants to see your dick. Don't I mean, share. yes, in, in, in a lot of cases, flashing your lady nooks and crannies is going to get you a better reception. Because, you know, I don't know why, but <laughs> but for the most part, it's best to assume that unless someone has specifically asked, they do not want a really good look at your bits and pieces. Oh. No. Well, unless they specifically ask, you should not show them Well, your flower. <laughs> Gonna get to our last one tonight. I'm running out of euphemism, so let's yeah. move on. Your flower. Let's... <laughs> Just, I, I feel so sorry for this. How do you explain this to your insurance? I mean, uh, you got to make sure to prove it. Yeah. Which is, like, she, you, yeah. Don't, you don't explain shit. You just show them that picture and are like, cover my ass. Big naked cover woman, big naked lady, stomp my windshield. Yeah, right. Look. Yeah, okay, here's your money, here's your money, here's your money. <laughs> we believe you. All right, finally tonight, this guy, we, we are at the top scale of the naked crazy. This guy, in terms of sheer dollar amount, did the most damage this week, I think. Well, no, maybe maybe in the naked category. Not in the crime category, but in the naked category, this guy wins. Alabama, it's from Hoover, Alabama, a driver minus his clothing struck at least seven cars at various spots along Alabama 150 this afternoon before finally stopping for police. Shortly afternoon, police were called about the naked driver. 
As police, a police search began for the 57-year-old man, he drove through the parking lot of Lewis of Long Lewis Ford Lincoln, where he hit at least two cars. General Manager Terry Poole said the man, who was driving a gray pickup truck, why we needed to know that, I don't know, backed into traffic and hit a car that was driving on a... But did he have his mother's permission? Well, if he did, it's okay. Um, <laughs> That's the important thing. He uh, hit a car driving on 150. The car spun and hit a Lewis Long car that was being taken for a test drive. I love the the, the manager's response to it. He just kept going, said uh, Poole. The driver continued eastbound, uh, damaging more cars, and two more cars crashes along the way. The driver still did not pull over. As the driver approached the 31 intersection. Police officer saw the man and tried to pull him over. The officer turned on the patrol car lights and sirens, but the driver went through the intersection and hit more cars. After that wreck, the driver stopped, and the officer found the man was not wearing any clothes. So for that cop, this was like just a a, a slow, steady downhill progression of things getting worse. Hit those cars, hit those cars, hit those cars, penis. You know... It just it just keeps getting worse the whole way. Although I do actually now I do want to know what kind of pickup he was driving because goddamn it kept going. Yeah, took a licking and kept on ticking. Who makes that pickup truck? Jeez, I want to know because you buy that. Did he pull? Because the story still hasn't loaded for me because Firefox is being a dick today. Oh, you're being a dick. Did he like pull into the dealership and hit a yep. bunch of dealership cars? Yep. And then left the dealership, hit a guy taking a test drive on his way out, and then kept hitting more cars. Wow. Did he buy... See, now this is the thing I want to know. Did he buy the truck at that dealership? (laughs) And, like, found out he could have gotten it cheaper somewhere else? Well, just fuck everything, then! (laughs) Like, was this an act of aggression against said dealership? Because then it all makes sense to me. Nothing except for the fact that he was naked, but that never fucking makes any sense to me. So, you know, yeah. At at what point in this whole shenanigans did the naked come into play? What was he like? You know, that's always the question. That's always the question. Okay, I'm none of these stories would be nearly as interesting if these people had just thought to put on pants. I'm going to crash into a bunch of cars, but you know what would make this perfect? Free balling it. <laughs> Perfection. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, what the fuck? Just in terms of dollar amount, try just, again, try to explain this to the insurance company. I imagine insurance people probably have the best stories. Oh, yeah. Well, the insurance people and the ER people. I, I wonder if they have a whole category of how much damage has been done by crazy naked people. I don't know, but they should. I know. I, I want to. I want to see the yearly dollar amount of how much damage crazy yeah. naked people. The do. naked damage index. Yeah. Yeah. That's important information that we deserve to know. So I guess uh, what what have we learned this week? We've learned that um, be very careful how you phrase shit on a plane. Cause... Well, you know what? We learned get a fucking grip is what we've learned. Yeah. If yeah. the pilot's cool, things are probably cool. If the pilot's not freaking out, you should probably not be freaking out. Just calm the fuck down and assess your situation. Yeah, he, yeah. he, he he's not going to happily chirp up and say, hey, everybody, hey. just want you to know, we've got a bomb on the plane. How you doing? He's not going to say that. Unless you've got fucking Leslie Nielsen for a pilot, in which case you have bigger problems. Yeah. Uh, I just want you to know we're all counting on you. Um, I, 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 we, we learned that, uh, that kids today are lazy. Yeah, damn kids today. Where's Can the work ethic? Properly. Where's where's the work ethic? Get off! If you want to rob someone's son, get off your ass. Yeah, you walk your ass into that bank. You you <coughs> you do you do it the way God intended. Get yourself a ski mask and a gun, and you walk right in there and you ask for your money. Don't don't just sit on your ass and expect it to be handed to you. Come on! 
And don't use boxer shorts like the guy last week. No, don't. Yeah, he he just. And if you're going to go into a place and rob it, if you once you've gotten past the work ethic thing and you've entered the place with your gun, don't lose your gun. <laughs> and then if that happens, just give up. Yeah. Don't go back and try to buy it because that's cut, fucking pathetic. Cut your losses. Cut your lo- no you when no when to hold them, no when to fold them, and no when to walk away and no when to run. And no when to stop getting fucking pepper sprayed. Yeah. Um, what else did we learn? Earlier, I just quoted Kenny Rogers. You did. Um, I'm gonna have to play that tonight. You realize shit. Now it's in my head. It's in my head. Um, we we learned that uh, trying to call a hitman on a judge is bad enough, but once you're on trial for trying to call a hitman on a judge, tone the douchebaggery down. Yeah, tone it down. Just. That Vin Diesel movie about the mobster who defended himself and, you know, was super charismatic. Yes, that was based on a true story, but they played it up a lot from the movies. You're not and you're my probably cousin. not that charismatic. You are not my cousin Vinny. You're no. Not. You're not going to pull that off. Mm-mm. Sorry. No. Um, we've learned that if it's daylight... There are better options for getting a drink than naked in someone else's house. Well, there are usually, unless unless you were invited to be naked and drunk in that person's house, which well, is a possibility. Yeah, that is, that can happen. But uh, there are almost always better options for getting booze than it, naked in someone's house. It's kind of like being a vampire. Wait to be invited in. Yeah. Wait to be invited in. Wait to be invited to get naked. Always wait to be invited before you get naked. We can learn so much from vampires. Um, <laughs> we've learned that if a... Fl- Although Edward didn't wait to be invited before he totally stopped that chick, so... He's not he a vampire. Sucks. Not a vampire. <laughs> um, we've learned that if a naked woman stomps on your windshield, make sure someone gets a picture of it to cover the insurance claim, because otherwise no one's going to believe that shit. Oh. I, I, I bet this guy still doesn't believe it fucking happened. He's like, what did I do? Who did I... What What deity did I piss off? Who do I need to start praying to? Is there a god? Be Kali, I think that would probably be Kali the Destroyer. Yeah. Yeah, start praying to Kali that giant naked women aren't going to start stomping on your car. Probably. That's... that's. And uh, finally tonight, we, we've learned that, that we really need to get a hold of some insurance records because, goddamn, I want to see how much... Month yearly is attributed to crazy naked. I want to know. Maybe out there works in the insurance industry. Start stealing us records. Give us some numbers. I want to know how much of an epidemic this is. We must stomp out (laughs) crazy naked. Although someone probably has got a fetish for stomping crazy naked. So, well, you. I mean, you know, you don't. You don't want to turn the. You don't want to turn us into a country of never nudes. That's no fun. Time and a place, man. T- time to time. Well, yes, there's there's a time and a place for being naked, and it's usually not during the commission of a crime, unless that's the point of the crime. Unless you're doing like the streaking thing, and being naked is the whole point. But if you're just committing other random crime, maybe you put on some pants before committing any more crime today. 